All right, guys, let's do this. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio Countdown. Tate McRae, it is so good to see you. How are you, Tate? I'm good. It's been forever. When's the last time I saw you? In we've done a couple of Zooms. Yeah, probably like Jingle Ball was like that last time I like saw that you. Is. Yeah. Have you been like you look super tan? Are you have you been like at the beach or <laughs> Thank like? Thank you. Oh my god. <laughs> um. Yeah, I've been I've been gone like just writing music for like ten months, so it's been like a, a second. Later on, later on, I got to hear about the uh, like. There's something about people writing in Sweden. Sweden has a thing to it, right? Yeah, I just came back from Sweden. That's exactly. Well, don't yeah. tell me yet. We're getting all this stuff, you guys. Tate, I think you said this. Um, you're working on a new era for your sound. Yes. Explain what is what does that all mean? I mean, I'm freshly 20. I just turned 20 in July. Happy birthday! Thank to you. you. Um, yeah, I mean, so much changes from one year. Like when I first started doing this, I was what 16. So, I mean, like, the difference between, like, 16 and 20, I feel like you change so much as a person. Like, one of my first, you were one of my first interviews. I was like, was I really? I was, like, 17 years Whoa. old. Um, and I just feel like a totally different person. Therefore, I'm going to write totally different music now. Um, so, it's just, like, so many things have happened in my life. I've gone through so many relationships and things that I feel like I just have a lot more to talk about. Now, do you think, uh, you know, when you're, first, like, 16 <laughs> in this industry... Everything was everything was like big and overwhelming to a degree. Maybe I don't know. Totally. And now it's like eh, this is kind of normalish to you now, or normally you know. In like some ways, and then some ways, just like never get old. Right. I think the, every time you walk on stage for the first time, it like never gets old. What a rush that's gotta be. It's just like God. a very crazy feeling that you will never like. It always feels like the first time you right. go on stage. I, yeah, I can imagine. It's gotta be the well, yeah, something you can't recreate somewhere. That feeling, you know. No. I assume an album is kind of. I'm told it's in the works. Yes. I don't know. There's most of the most of it's probably super top secret, uh -huh. obviously. But what can you say? Is it eighty percent done? Ninety percent done? Twenty? Nope. Zero percent done. <laughs> I mean, I could say that it's like eighty percent done, but then tomorrow <laughs> I could write six new songs and it could be forty percent done. So I don't know. It just it. I feel like right now I'm in a spot where I feel like it's close. Right. Um. But then I could get off tour and write music again. So I don't know. We're like, I feel like I have the the body of it and it feels really good. And I feel like it's has a storyline and a through line um, throughout the whole thing. But I, who knows when it'll be finished. I mean, sometimes you, you turn in your album and the day before you write like your favorite song. So. That's what it always happens. I've talked to so many artists, like, I guess the deadline, there's always a deadline, I guess, you know, yeah. you have to turn it in on Tuesday at midnight. Uh -huh. I'm just making that up. I don't know if it's, you would ever turn it in on midnight. It I don't is know. like that though. It is. Okay. <laughs> uh, and, but like, but, but Tuesday at like, 8 p.m., the greatest thing hits. And then you, yeah. do, you, do you have to fight to push, like, okay, put, put it on the album or push the date back or it's just a totally. big old... Totally. I mean, dates get pushed so much because, you know, the even the mixing process, like, there's my greedy i mean has like so many mixing and so many like production notes and um it just takes forever like it just your your mind is always picking everything apart and then at the end before you release the album all the pressure's off so that's sometimes when you write like the most like exciting stories because they're like no you don't have anything left to really like there's no pressure to like do anything like really important so you sometimes it takes off the stress of it and you write really good stuff oh man i can't well is there a date I get, don't say it. Yeah, don't say a date. If you set a date, it's going to change. Okay. Uh, or is there a date? Don't answer that. No, I'm sorry. There's okay. not. What is the uh, weirdest place you've been asked for a photo? Ooh. I I just love these stories. Crazy fan encounters. I just can't get enough. Not that your fans are crazy. They're beautiful, you know, but. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to think. Um, I feel like I always get asked the worst times. <laughs> I always look my worst. <laughs> just like when you're looking like. You're, you're, you're when like, I'm looking like straight trash, that's always when I get asked for photos. Um, I think <laughs> one time, I mean, some, one time I was like hanging out with my grandpa and we were getting breakfast and they asked for a picture of me and they asked for an autograph from my grandpa. So gra grandpa, he, he they asked, wanted one from him? He asked, they asked for like an autograph from him and me. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, what's going on? Like, it was just really funny. Um, just because he's like 85. <laughs> did grandpa, did he sign the autograph? And Of course. He was like, thought he was going to like steal his signature or something. He's a rock star. Go he ahead, is. Grandpa. Tate, you kind of alluded to this, but uh, I think I read that you get super anxious when releasing new music. And maybe that was when yeah. you were 16 and not now. I mm -hmm. don't know. But what what's going through your head now as all this stuff is about to come out and coming out? I mean, I think it's just because, I mean, A, I'm a private person. So like even my, it takes a lot for me to share like, personal information about me even like my best friends um and then my music is just like my diary so i feel like i go from like zero to a hundred when i'm releasing a song is it or is, does it make you feel like if you're such a private person which obviously yet yeah, you are yeah 
but to put this stuff out, is there like a kind of a inner struggle? Like, do I say this? You of know? course. I mean, and then people are, it's up to other people to see how they want to look at it, how they want to look at me. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm being brutally honest every single time, regardless if that's like, I talk about some of my biggest flaws in my music sometimes and my biggest insecurities as a person that I wouldn't, you wouldn't walk up to someone and say, Hey, I'm taking, this is what I'm, you know, that's, these, that's are my wor- these are my worst traits. <laughs> like, but I, <laughs> but I talk about it in my songs and you know, I think you got to just let people digest with that and just now it's in their hands and it's, it's not in my hands, but it is, it's scary. I've never thought of it like that. You, you're at a Starbucks and you walk up to a stranger. Hey, what's your name? Matt. Hi, Matt. <laughs> I'm terrible at blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Just thought you should know that. You know? <laughs> Just thought I should tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I like a half calf, double half calf, half latte. Okay. Anyway, do you love road life? That's my, that's my question. Um, okay. Road life, road, road life, road life <laughs> has a lot of pros and cons. Sleeping in the bunk is like the best sleep you'll ever get in your entire life. Because the car is kind of moving. And- yeah. You're moving. You're with people. I don't know why I'm like, I like being around people. But it's like so pitch black in there. You get the best sleeps and you wake up in just like a new city at like 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. And you're like, oh my God, I'm in like San Francisco. Um, But then also you feel like you're in a bubble, like disconnected from the rest of the world. So it's like really trippy because you're like on tour and you're doing the same thing every night and you're with the same people. It it can get like a little... um, Like Groundhog Day-ish? Yeah. And then you're like, oh my God, I haven't texted my friends from home in like three months. And you know, I feel like... Totally different person. I, f- I forget what band I was, what artist I was talking to. But they said they had some app where it, you could, uh, I guess it just, because you know, you're in a bunk and yeah. it's dark. Most, you know, it, yeah. And the app would just show what it looks like outside right now. Because you think wow. it's daytime and it's night. I mean, it's, it's probably a dumb app. I don't know what it was. But, <laughs> but uh, like, for some reason, they felt it made, made them feel better to have this app that showed daylight. It would help. Or whatever it is. There's like know? no windows in your bunk. I mean, you, you can't really see much, so. Yeah, that'd be great. You should give me that out. <laughs> uh, yeah, let me let me work on that. One. Uh, true or false? Uh, this is another thing I read about you. I've been reading up on you. Perfect. <laughs> um, you said you are the worst at titling things. This might be an old old quote. Yeah. But are you still? Uh, matter of fact, it is an old quote. But are you still? Are you better at titling things? And like how I'm like, for example, greedy, which we're going to play in a couple of seconds. Uh-huh. Are you happy with the title, greedy? Yeah, I mean that is like probably my shortest title. Like I feel like. I feel like all my, I try to make them really long for some reason. Like you broke me first. Or like, she's all I want to be like, <laughs> just like the most unmemorable names <laughs> you can possibly think of. <laughs> like no one can ever remember the titles of my names. They're just like, oh, this one, like, and I'll like hum it. But, um, I just find it hard because I'm like, how can you like title it in like one word? I don't know. I want it to be exciting. I feel like it never really sums up a song. And when I used to do YouTube, I used to just name them. Like I wrote a song, dot, dot, dot. And then like, I feel like it's up to your interpretation. What do you think the worst uh, title you've ever given something? Uh, like it can't be, you broke me first. You can, we can laugh about that. The song was huge, you know, so see, it, it mean, worked. Sometimes when people are like, oh, what's your, like, what's, your, what's one of your songs? I'm like, oh, you broke me first. They're like, it's such a depressing title. Like, I'm like, I've really set myself up for failure. Like, I'll read my set list, like when I'm on tour and I'm like, it's like, hate myself. She's all I want to be. You broke me first. Friends will look at friends that way. I'm like, this is really concerning. Like, I need a drink. Oh my god. <laughs> well, whatever, you, Tate. I know, yeah, it's it's working. So keep Thanks. doing your crazy titling or whatever. Yeah, greedy. Yes. God, what a track. Thank you. What do what do people give me any kind of backstory? All that fun stuff. The question you get asked a thousand times. What's it about? But yeah, give me all that good stuff. Um. Well, this song is really exciting because I've never done something like this before. Um, a like the beat is so sick and I feel like as a dancer like makes me feel like a totally different way um, but also I feel like a lot of my people who listen to my music have always seen me in like a very specific light like I'm very honest and sad girl and whatever and then I feel like there's a whole another side of me as a person that people just like have no idea about um, because my personality is like very different from like what I write right um, and this one kind of feels like it's like the feistier sassier side of me that um you know, I feel like it kind of describes the scenario of like going out and it's kind of stemmed from like anger of just like s- people assuming things about you and like assuming like, oh, why can't I get you? No- why can't I get to know you? And why are you so closed off? And um, I think it's just like a, it's such as like a, a an empowering song being like, yeah, I would want myself like it takes time to like get to know me and, and actually open up to people. And I think it'll be a really fun one for people to listen to and dance to. I bet there'd be a, this would be a good one. To do live, obviously. You know. Yeah, I'm excited. We all know the great you know performances you've done. Uh, you know, I get those. I want to hear what what is the worst gig you've ever done? Something <laughs> went straight to hell. Oh my gosh! Give me the worst of the worst. I mean, it was just awful. I 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> Great I questions, have, huh? <laughs> I have sometimes really bad luck with like acoustic sets. Don't don't know why, but there's literally been scenarios that me and my guitar player, Zach, this is hilarious. We've been through like hell and back with um, some of these acoustic sets. One time, <laughs> okay, so we're literally like on this stage. I don't I think we're in like Boston or something. It's freezing cold out. I don't know why we're doing an outside set. Um, there's like all these like balls, like blown up balls in the pool and it's so windy. So all these like contestants come in to like watch. They're like sitting down. All of a sudden this massive gust of wind is happening. Like literally you can't even hear me because the mic is like just wind. <laughs> um, <laughs> all these balls like fly out of the pool. They're like flying everywhere. All the radio people are like freaking out. They're like, what's going on? And then this huge sign that like has my name and like whatever, it, like falls on a girl. And I'm like, oh my oh. God. We, we literally were like, oh my God, like oh my God. pause. This is insane. How is this wind this strong that a huge sign is being like thrown over? Um, and so we had to like move her. She was like right beside the stage. Oh I felt so bad. I'm like, oh my gosh, this poor girl. Um, but it was just a total show. Like it was just, it was insane. Now let me just confirm. Uh, winter, freezing cold. They do have buildings in Boston with heat, right? Right. Why couldn't you do it inside? We could have totally done it indoor, but- they were thinking it was like a summer fest in the middle of like October. Oh, gotcha. I'm like, this is insane. What is your favorite? And of all the tracks you've written, whether for yourself or another artist or what have you, what is your favorite lyric that you have ever written? That I've ever written? That you have ever written. Came out of your brain, into your phone or paper or whatever. Oh my gosh. There's this one. This is so- It could be from the upcoming album. This, this, totally is, such, titled, this is such a cliche. I can't even give you the lyric. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> because it's from my upcoming album. Okay. But I think it's one of the smartest lyrics I've ever written, and it's on one of the tracks. I don't know which track yet. I'm giving you nothing. Okay. Um, but it really, it really feels like I, I was like, oh, that's a good lyric. Like that, I don't feel like I get very impressed by my own songwriting, just because. I mean, I'm always gonna be like my worst critic, but I'm like, this is a a good lyric. Okay, so you can't say what it is, obviously, no. unreleased track. <laughs> but will we know what your how will we know which one you're talking about? Though? It's um, I'll say it's one of like the weirdest titles on the album. So weird title. It's a, like, you'll see and you'll be like, oh, that's an interesting one. I wonder what this is going to be about. Um, and I think it's it's like it's a sad song, and I think it uh, I think it's a really smart um title. Okay, and the, is the title the lyric you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. All right. God, now I'm so curious. <laughs> Tate, you know this about me. You brought it up when you walked in. I am obsessed with the paranormal. Yes. Ghost, you know, haunted houses, UFOs. I've got a podcast called Paranormalish. We've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. Would you consider upcoming tour? Yeah. Would you consider for your friend Jojo? Yeah. St one of the uh, staying in a haunted hotel room. I'll just cut to it. Absolutely not. Hey, oh my God. You could, be a Jojo. Report, you could report on what happens in like, you know, like we could, we could find the room because some of these hotels you're staying in are beautiful, but there's a haunted room. We could find the one for you. I would absolutely cry. I'm so sensitive to paranormal things. I pick up everything. I'm the biggest sleepwalker ever. Oh my God, that's right. I'm did tell, oh. walking around my room. Oh my God. Lately, I have been seeing, I've been hallucinating massive spiders in my room and I, I'll throw I'll throw stuff at them. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like throwing all the stuff at them. I'm screaming and I run to my kitchen, grab a knife and I wake up with a knife and like literally in my PJs, in my hallway in my apartment, being like, "Oh my god!" What? And I, the? I'm, I still believe there's like a massive spider. Anyway, I asked someone. And apparently, it's called an astral spider, and it's like when an evil spirit is in your life, um, and they're like sucking your energy from you. You, Shut you them. start to hallucinate astral spiders. So you have to like get rid of negative energy in your life to like get rid of these astral spiders. And it happens to me so much, and it's so scary. I have no. I've talked to a lot of people with some crazy stories. I've never heard that that term, astral. Astral spiders. I don't. I don't even know this is real. What? The? I could be totally like making this up, <laughs> but based on Google, um, it's super real. And yeah, it's it's so scary. I don't know why. But that's why I literally can't stay in a hotel that's haunted because my body will like freak out. Like I do weird stuff. I literally become possessed. My friends say whenever I sleep over, which them. makes you the best candidate for this. <sighs> But okay, we'll, we'll scratch, let me scratch that off the list. Scratch no. it. Okay, have you got rid of the spider yet or no? It's still, this was like last week that it happened again. So. Oh my God. All right. To be, I want to hear more of the story if you care to share. Yeah. Like next time I see you. All Perfect. Right. Tate, uh, we, we talked earlier about Sweden. There's something about Sweden. I don't know who you worked with in Sweden. Yeah. 
But I, I've known so many people that have gone to Sweden, whether it's working with Max or whoever. Yeah. Um, what is it about Sweden and the producers? And what's why Sweden? It seems like it's not just you. It's there's something to it. Sweden's like the uh, just like the best place for pop music. Um, I mean, like Ilya Savin, Max Martin are some of like the greatest songwriters of all time. Like some of my favorite songs ever are written by them. Um, and yeah, they just really know how to make pop records. And so I went there for like a week and it's so interesting to learn. I mean, how they, it's like also mathematical for them, how to, how to song write. So it's like all like, you could look at it on a graph and every pop song like looks the same. Huh. Um, which is just so interesting. It's just such a strategy. Um, and it's, it's really cool. I mean, they're, I was so inspired and I'm, they're just very big inspirations to me. Who'd you work with over there? Uh, Max, Savin, and Ilya. I was um, talking to, it, there's a, uh, I'm, I'm friends with the Backstreet Boys, right? And they work with Max Forever. Yeah. And that, that I want it that way. Yeah. The, I want, I want, uh-huh. I think that song doesn't make grammatical sense. If no. You, <laughs> but they did another version of it that made grammatical sense. Yeah. And it was awful. Yeah. So they went with this, you know, other version. Yeah. Which I, it, that's, you know, the product of Sweden making, making music sense, I guess. It's right? interesting uh, because, um, they basically just like figure out like what sounds the best coming out of your mouth, not like what makes the most sense. <laughs> so that like you'll just like a sound and you're like, that literally isn't a word. And they're like, oh, but it sounds really good. And you're like, okay. <laughs> and I'll it sounds it. great. <laughs> well, okay. One of these days I want to witness this in person. You have to. Thing. What song or album just changed your life? For me as a kid, it's an, it's a no brainer for me. It's yeah. Thriller, Michael Jackson. Wow. Changed me. Okay. I mean, just, I, yeah. So same. Yeah. What, what did that for you? Oh my gosh. That's such a hard question. Yeah. It, it, maybe it's several. In um, your- I have so many. I mean, I feel like, um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like basically like, I feel like teenage dream by Katy Perry was like a big cultural reset. I love Katy. Me. She's awesome. Honestly, this was like one of the best pop songs of all time is teenage dream by Katy Perry. But then, okay. Sound palette in this song. I will literally never hate ever, ever, ever is The Beach by The Neighborhood. Oh, whoa. Um, literally, I don't know what this, this song like transcends me and I will never get sick of it. And I always like on every song record that I'm doing, I'll always reference that and be like, make the sound sound like this um, because I just love it so much. And it's just a really great song. Have you ever met the uh, Katy Perry or The Neighborhood? Uh, I have actually. Not Katy Perry, but I went to the neighborhood. Did you tell them about like your obsession with this, with their track? No, I got nervous. <laughs> <laughs> One of these days. One of these days I Maybe will. a collab at some point or a perform. Who knows? All right. Just putting that out into the uh, universe. Message to your fans, you know, new fans, old fans. What do you, you want to say to them? Um, just that I love you and I'm very grateful that you guys listen to my music and you like it and you're, you've been here for so long. Um, it just means the world to me. Um, and I'm just so excited to be back on tour and seeing your faces again. What's your re- your reaction to all this, you know, success you've had so far? And still a lot of things you want to do. I get it. But you've had some really cool experiences. Thank what's you. your what's your what's your take as you kind of look back on on everything so far? Um, it feels very surreal. I mean, just like I feel like I've dreamed of this stuff like my whole life. Um, so just to be on certain stages and dance and sing together just I think a lot of it happens and you don't even realize it happens because you're like this feels fake. Like, and people like wow, yeah. people listening to your music and screaming it back to you, like it all feels very fake to me. And I get imposter syndrome all the time where I'm like, this can't be real. Like I can't actually be here. But then like when you actually like look back, you're like, oh my God, that was a, a whirlwind. Uh, but it's, yeah, just this whole world is very crazy. And I just feel very lucky um, to be in this position and to be able to do what I do. That's got to be a weird feeling when you're in, especially another country where maybe perhaps like Eng- English, not their first language. Yeah. And these people, strangers. Oh my gosh spitting your lyrics that you wrote in your, you know, bedroom, garage, whatever, back yeah. at you. Oh, I mean, like, what the? Uh, you know, we went to Australia last year on tour and that's like my biggest market for some reason is Australia. They love you in Australia. Um, and it was just, <laughs> it was the wildest thing ever because I was expecting to walk in there and just be, you know, a, a nobody because I'm like, I don't, I've never really been here. And it was like the most insane, like they're like 40,000 people at this like, at this festival and like I've never heard such a loud crowd before like I like got like you get like chills on stage and you're like this is so weird like I can't believe you know like my album cut song like that's just like Whoa. really crazy that you guys are that loud for a song like that it's just very cool that's super cool man for real quick recap Tate uh, Greedy it is out jump on this track uh, new album coming we don't know when very soon top top secret uh, tour and in the middle of running all over all over the place you know 
Uh, what else do people need to know about Tate McRae? Tate McRae? Um, just lots of experimental and exciting things coming. I feel like uh, I'm stepping into like a new phase of my life and phase of music. So I think people should expect like a change a little bit. Um, so it'll be a little shocking and exciting. Shocking's good though. Mm-hmm. Shock him up. Tate, thanks for dropping in. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. At the end of every interview, fist bump to make it official. Give me a little. Bye. Hell yeah.